Hello fans and welcome back to Mork Softball Field here at Ed Cruzy Stadium for game two of the series between the Texas Lutheran University Bulldogs and the Centenary Ladies. As Mackenzie Cox steps in for her first at bat against Sydney Olet, takes strike one from her. Second pitch from Olet is low and outside for a ball once, so counts even now. So our top three that we're gonna have is gonna be Mackenzie Cox, Catherine Stokes, and Bella Dominguez. In the field for the Bulldogs, we have uh, Hillis at third, Leal at short, Clark at second, Jack at first, Rodriguez behind the plate. And from left to right, we have Landry, Kay, and Seath. That one's gonna be grounded to the second baseman, Clark, who's able to quickly make that throw over to first base for the first out of the inning. Now back to the lady, number three, now Catherine Stokes. And this is gonna bring up number three, Catherine Stokes. Stoke went one for two last game with a strikeout and a single. And Olette is coming into this game with an ERA of 2.31 in 10 appearances and 39.1 innings pitched. She's done a good job so far this season. She started out a little on the rougher side, but she's just really came in, found her own, much like most of this team has. And the changeup there from Olette is in for strike two. Dirty pitch there. Definitely froze Stokes. And Stokes will rip that one foul. This count remains one and two. So one, two count here to Stokes. And the changeup misses low for ball two. Stokes doing a good job of just getting the count to run high and making Olette throw a lot of pitches so far. As that one misses, although lots of the Bulldog players wanted that one called. So Stokes now with a full count. And she'll foul that one back into the net. We are coming up on the eighth pitch of this at bat here. And the full count pitch is going to be in there, but an easy pop fly for Leal over at short for the second out of the inning. Now back to the ladies, number 27, Bella Dominguez. And this will bring up number 27, Bella Dominguez. Playing at first base this game. As the changeup from Olette misses low for ball one. Wind currently blowing from uh, right to left. That one misses inside for ball two. And a strike there from Olette to start working her way back in the count. Dominguez came into today hitting 326 and 86 at bats. A lot of this. Centenary team. They have been doing pretty good on so far this season. As Olette finds her way to make this count even at two and two. Good 
And that one will be grounded right back at Ulet. And an easy throw over to the first will end the inning. So Jen, the ladies unable to score. No hits, no errors, no runners left on base. And we will head into the bottom of the first inning. I chose TLU because I like the one-on-one -on -one that I get with my professors. Being able to talk to all the professors one-on-one, -on -one, they're definitely helpful in deciding like what I can do with my degree and then how to get into those different fields. I liked the tour of the campus. Like I liked seeing how everything was really close together. Our classes now from like first year and second year are all in the lab, so we have our own like space that we can go to for studying. Well, I chose TLU because I had met some people who were in the program and they told me some good things about it. It's a smaller school, so I feel like I was gonna get more of that one-on-one -on -one, uh, type of learning. I get to, you know, be more hands-on with patients and more engaged with my preceptors. Welcome back to Mork Softball Field. Shout out to Sydney letting me finish my nachos before we got back on on the air. Very professional of me. But Kaylee Clark now at the plate after we saw Sydney let go off to a good start in the top half of the inning. Clark plays down a pretty good bunt and she is going to reach with relative ease. As number 17, Mandy Hoback. Actually, that's number 19, sorry. Emma Shepard, the right-handed pitcher in the, in the circle for this game, too. I might even call that a infield single. Mm -hmm. I think Clark had it beat out yeah. no matter. And now she'll go for second and take it with ease. Yeah, and the ladies have made... Um, quite some changes kind of on their lineup. Um, behind the plate now is Morgan Dawson, and over at short is uh, River Boltinghouse. That's a cool name right there. It took up most of my space, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> but, I mean, really the key for her is, you know, we'll kind of see, did she pay attention when and during the last game? Did she see what the Bulldogs do on the bases mm -hmm. and you know is this something that they've learned from or is it going to be same thing yeah hard to tell when Clark's out there that's like doesn't matter who's back there she's going to make it to second meanwhile Annie Kay is thrown out but pretty good sacrifice right there and now that'll bring up Kylie Jack who just had one at bat back in game one and drew that walk and then Replaced by Russell on the base pass, and Russell stayed in there the rest of the game. You can tell she wanted that one. Mm -hmm. Just missed it, a little bit under it. So Clark at third, and Jack at the plate with one down. Lays down a bunt. Clark won't be able to come home, but a very well-placed bunt by Jack as she is going to reach. What an awesome bunt, too. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you didn't think she was going to bunt. I didn't think she was going to bunt. I don't think Centenary knew she was going to bunt. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, she could have gotten an RBI, but she's just making her numbers mm -hmm. go up. So, I mean, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get on yeah. base. Runners at the corners now for Tatum Seath. They'll have Jack run, then the tag kind of applied high around her face, and that one probably wasn't too fun for her. And didn't he call her out? I thought so, but she's still over there at second. Yeah, I'm actually kind of confused. <laughs> 
I think we both saw, I'm sure fans y'all saw as well, the second base umpire put his fist up in the air, ruling she was out, and now she's still there at second. No, I'm very confused. <laughs> I'm going to go step in the other room and clarify this situa right. situation for us. Uh, hold down the floor. I got okay. I got you. Investigator <laughs> Sydney Cox in full effect right now. But yeah, kind of a confusing play, but it works out for TLU as they got runners at second and third. For Seath, who had the two-run homer last game. So that one goes high from Shepard. Emma Shepard this year, 3.03 ERA, 2-1 and one record. Kind of the second-best arm on this ladies' team. Behind it. Anna Scarbrock is swinging a miss there for Seath. And folks, Sydney coming back, hopefully with an update. All right, so I was told that there was probably an, an obstruction call, mm -hmm. um, and that is why she is still there. So now we know, and it makes sense, yeah. you know. Kind of got hit in the face, too. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it makes sense. Now we at least kind of have an answer. Because, I, I mean, I couldn't go on yeah. with the game, Easton. I was, I was too confused. I was thrown off. 2-2 two, two count here. Meanwhile, to Tatum Seath, runners both in scoring position, just one down. And that one low from Shepard for ball three. <laughs> Payoff pitch and a swing and a miss as Tatum Seath goes down swinging. First strikeout for... Emma Shepard, that was a good one. Yeah, for sure, especially with the way Seath has been seeing the ball lately. She's just, you know, every ball that she's hit, she's hit it solid. Mm -hmm. And so that just tells me that she's seeing it pretty good. And so that's a big out for the ladies, for sure. And now number one, Mia Landry back up. She missed game one. She had the essentially a walk-off base hit to have the run rule happen. So now it earns the start here. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, keep in mind, like, Landry is a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, but she doesn't play like it, you know, and so it's really fun to see. That one kind of bouncing up to the plate there for ball two of the AB. See Serena Gonzalez on deck as well. So another Bulldog that had a strong final ending of, of batting, getting the start. Two zero goes high for ball three. Yeah, and honestly, like, I just wouldn't want to load the bases for Serena Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. I really wouldn't. I mean, if I can, I want to get out of this inning, preferably now. And you saw what you did with the bases loaded last time. Yeah, scored all three mm -hmm. runs. There's a strike delivered there from Shepard, and I imagine Landry was taking all the way there. I can imagine, too. I definitely agree with you there. I mean, it's early in the game. Just got to make Shepard throw a little more. Center just went out of way to get out of this jam, and now the count will go full. Another swing and a miss that Shepard gets. And payoff pitch is incoming. Do you feel the pressure, Easton? I do. 3-2, Landry doesn't as she draws the walk. And the bases are loaded for Serena Gonzalez. And now the pressure is on Shepard in the circle. Yeah, now I mean, you definitely just don't want to give her something too fat, you know, especially the wind. I mean, it's still blowing, but kind of dangerous that it sort of stopped a little bit when she mm -hmm. came up to bat. But two outs here. Change up from Shepard, mm -hmm. just missing low. Really good pitch, though. Yeah, Serena lays off. 1 0. Clark's at third. And Jack at second, mm -hmm. and Landry over at first. Foul off there from Serena. 1 1 count. It's definitely a spot, too, where you can. See what um, you catch her behind the plate. 
But Dawson, with the bases loaded, is a big spot for her as well. Yeah, absolutely. So Gonzalez just misses low. Ball two. Yeah, Shepard's doing a really good job of keeping these pitches lower in the zone against Serena. Um, you know, while they're not being called strikes, I mean, I think I'd rather throw a ball than give up a grand slam. 2-1, mm -hmm. and Serena swings through it. Count goes back even, 2-2. Two and two. He's got a fun battle right here. For sure, and I mean, this defense here, I mean, it really has to have her back now. Just got to go out and make a play. Gonzalez just gets a piece to foul it away. Yeah, good battle there for sure. I mean, just doing what she can, getting enough of the ball to kick it foul and hopefully get a better pitch. comes the 2-2 two -two from Shepard and Serena once again fouled away. Yeah, and a dangerous foul ball too, straight back. Mm -hmm. Telling us she's on time. She's seeing the ball just a little bit under it. What's the pitch count of this at bat, Sydney? And this will be the seventh pitch. Yeah. And strike three swinging, a big strikeout there for Emma Shepard. Get your second of the inning. And we will go to the top of the second as the Bulldogs strand the bases loaded. 0-0 zero, zero still our score. Please stay with us. More than dream of a better world. Make it happen with a TLU degree. Texas Lutheran University provides one-on-one -on -one opportunities for students to build their college resumes. As freshmen and sophomores, our students are already performing research with a professor, presenting at conferences, and building their portfolios to apply for graduate schools and professional health programs. The world needs you. Answer your calling. TLU. Learn boldly. Live to inspire. Learn more at tlu.edu. Welcome back, fans, to Mork Softball Field. Sydney Ulek gets ahead of the count here, 0-1. Oh, She's facing a new batter in this lineup. Uh, Viviana Rivero came in as the DP for this game. 5'9 mm -hmm. junior from Redondo Beach, California. Is that one Rivero looks at for ball one of the AB, 1-2. Sun started to set just a bit here in Seguin as ground ball. Kaylee Clark moves over to her left and makes the play. It's great range mm -hmm. by that. I mean, I wasn't sure maybe if that was going to go through the infield, but just so much speed, no, so much quickness to be able to exactly. keep that in and make the play. So now that'll bring up number 10, Jaden Thrasher, still in the lineup. Just playing at third now instead of behind the plate where she was played really well at in the last game. Kind of kept the ladies in it for a while with her play behind the plate. And now doing some hitting again. Of course, in game one, didn't get to see the, the ladies bat too much. Estrada was just so efficient and only pitched five innings. Only one batter it was Mackenzie Cox that hit more than two times. And that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's definitely crazy. I would hate to be a, a nine-hole hitter when we're facing Ash and Strother because chances are I'm not going to be <laughs> doing too much batting. Yeah. As that one running up to make the play is Mia Landry out and left. Kind of cupped it there, and that's out number two. Yeah, great job. Tough play, too, with Liao going back, but no, just called her off right away and just went and made the play. So that's a really excellent job by Landry out there. And a swing and a miss there. Roulette off to a great start. Yeah, she looks really good out there. I mean, just really dominant. She looks confident in her ability and just doing what she needs to. Yeah, quick one, two, three inning again. Kaylee Clark with the throw over. And we will go bottom two. Still scores in this one. Please stay with us. As an MAT student, you are an athletic trainer, and I think that's something really cool that we get to experience. We're pretty hands-on. Anything that like our preceptor asks us to do, like we're able to do. Going out to practices and traveling to games. We're doing evals, looking at them, helping them with their rehab like protocols. For me personally, I do a lot of like hands-on where I'm like speaking with the patients about how they feel, and so I feel like it's a lot of like one-on-one -on -one interactions. Knowing that I'm going to go into the clinic every day and I don't know who's going to walk through the door and what their problems going to be, and that I get to be the one that tells them like, "Hey, this is what's wrong," but I can also help you. So here's a solution. Welcome back to Mork Softball Field. Regan Hillis at the plate, facing off against Shepard. This one popped up down that first base line and a diving play made over there at first. That was 27. Bella Dominguez making the play. Now back to the Bulldogs in the 21, Bella Rodriguez. Yeah, definitely can't, you know, give up and out like that, but, you know, it happens. Can't be perfect all the time, so now Bella Rodriguez in, getting the start today behind the plate, and with her first at bat of the day. One count to Rodriguez. It's Rodriguez and then Legal to follow her, I believe. O2 count here, that's another foul ball. See Bella Rodriguez this season. Batting 286, making her ninth start this year of the 18 games. Count is 1-2 to the Bulldog backstop. Here comes the pitch. Another one fouled away from Rodriguez. Rodriguez coming into today, hitting 286 in, sorry, in 21 at-bats. Uh, kind of been in and out of the lineup. Uh, there's been a good battle for that catching spot behind the plate, but I mean, honestly, it's probably pretty nice to not have to squat every game, so. <laughs> Here, and a loud call off there from the lady shortstop, making sure everyone and more soft enough to knew it was hers. Yeah, we heard it up here for sure. That was River Bolton House making the play. This is going to bring up number 77, Lindsay Leo. Yeah, ground ball down the third base line, and she's not going to make it there in time. So Shepard goes one, two, three. So we'll go to the top of the third. 
Still scoreless in this one, 0-0. Please stay with us. The future belongs to those who shape it, to the people with the vision to see past what is and discover what's possible. At Texas Lutheran University, we'll help you turn your dreams into reality. Our students thrive in a residential college campus experience where they make lifelong friends, pursue challenging and fulfilling careers, and serve the common good. And this sense of community is just one of the reasons why U.S. News & World Report ranked TLU the number one best value in the West. TLU. Learn boldly. Live to inspire. First step out of this inning, and that was ground ball that Centenary Batter was able to reach on. Because that was Mallory Stout. Now that is number 24, Morgan Nelson. Yeah, I think, I mean, maybe it would be ruled an error, but at the same time, I don't know. Kind of a tough play for Olette to make. Yeah. Now bunt here, and a nice sacrifice as we let, we'll flip it over to Clark covering the bag. So that was Dawson right there, the catcher. Now we got number 23, Noel Sandman, freshman from Huntsville, Texas. Shout out East Texas. <laughs> that one grounded, foul by Hillis. Uh, Sandman actually hasn't had any at-bats yet this season. Mm -hmm. It's been in eight games, so she's on our stat sheet, but yeah, first yeah. plate appearance of the year. Yeah, she's ran, but that's about it. So, honestly, it's kind of exciting. A uh, hesitant swing there, and it's 0-2 for her. Down 0-2 to Olette here. And looks at ball one there. It's 1-2. Runner on second, one out. And strike three, swinging in Sydney Ouellette. Gets another, and two are down. Yep, and good for her. I mean, that's her first strike out of the game so far. I'll be curious to see if we see any more. This one grounded to short, Liao charging. The throw, nice scoop from Kylie Jack, and no, they waved her safe. And the ladies, Bulldogs thought they got out of the end and instead, runner scores from Stout. I mean, what a turn of events that was. I don't even know what just happened. I thought the play was made. Maybe her foot came off the bag from Jack, because that was a good scoop. Meanwhile, that one caught by Clark, so that will end the inning. But a run does come across for Centenary. They lead 1-0. Please stay with us. More than dream of a better world. Make it happen with a TLU degree. Texas Lutheran University provides one-on-one -on -one opportunities for students to build their college resumes. As freshmen and sophomores, our students are already performing research with a professor, presenting at conferences, and building their portfolios to apply for graduate schools and professional health programs. The world needs you. Answer your calling. TLU. Learn boldly. Live to inspire. Learn more at tlu.edu.
Welcome back to Mork Softball Field. As Kaylee Clark leading off the bottom of the third. And a perfect bunt right there. Clark's going to reach no problem. I mean, it doesn't get much more perfect than that. That was a beautiful bunt. She's two for two in this game now. Mm -hmm. And we got Annie K coming up with Clark at first. And Cindy, what do you think is going to happen here? Hmm. Need an expert's opinion. I think she might steal. Okay. I mean, I'm not sure, <laughs> but I think it is a possibility. And there she goes, and sh she is safe. I should have I'm a, a genius. I should have a pre-recorded just Kaylee Clark still <laughs> a second. Like, yeah, that we can like play. Just that the sound I just got to press a button, yeah. and then it happens. That way we can just... Save our breath. Old news. Really, I should be keeping track. What What is she at now? She stole, what, two yet, two last game? And is that two so far this game? I think. I believe so. So that is. I think that's like 56. 56 now? Yeah. It's, that was sold based on 56, just in case anyone was wondering. Meanwhile, NEK reaching there. And Clark moves to third. I mean, that's back-to-back. -back bunt, base, hit. So now a first and third opportunity here mm -hmm. for the Bulldogs as Kylie Jack steps up to the plate. And now Jack showing bunch. She laid on a good one earlier. Runner goes and the throw down and the I think Centenary made the mistake there of throwing it down as Clark will easily get that run back for TLU. So now we are tied 1 1. Yeah, pretty much we're just back to a 0 0 ball game, pretty much. So a quick answer from TLU after that short lead. Didn't last very long for the ladies, and now they'll call time in the circle. So we're back in it. We got no outs and a runner at second base. Danny K at second for Kylie Jack. Bulldogs off to a hot start in this bottom three. And I believe also a warning was just issued to the shortstop. Jack swings and misses. Andy K will retreat back to second. Long wait now, here's the pitch coming from Shepard. Kay again will make her way back to second, just kind of messing with Dawson behind the plate right now. Yeah, she's taking some big leads out there, just being aggressive with this new catcher. We can see uh, Bolting House all the way shifted over. Ooh, a big swing there from Jack. I <laughs> had some eggs of on that. <laughs> I just went to the. I would have been a little far. scared if I uh -huh. was over in the first base coach uh, box over there. So still here at the at bat. 2 2 for Kylie Jack. So on lazy pop up and just running to make the play is Stokes at second for out number one as Jack pops out. That's yeah, a big out right there. And I mean, to, to throw an inside pitch after Jack pulled one the way she did, to go back to it and jam her, that's a really great job right there by Shepard. This one, a pretty good swing. It's going to be caught out there on the move. A heck of a catch made out in the left. 
And that was number 23, Noel Sandman. Again, hasn't seen a lot of action this year, mostly as a base runner, but makes a heck of a play in foul territory. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's such a big time play right there, especially the way Seath has been seeing the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a good thing to get to keep her off the bases and get this inning over with. Kay still at second with two outs, and now Mia Landry at the plate as Kay will easily seal third. They're going to send Kay home as well. The throw in, not quite in time, and Annie Kay running hard. And the Bulldogs take their first lead of game two, 2-1. Two, yeah. And Landry, she did a good job there. So essentially the batter can't like move into the way, but if you just stand there and like hold your ground and not move and they hit you, then it's fine. But if I'm trying to move out of the box and she hits me, now I'm in trouble mm -hmm. and I believe the out is recorded. So she did a good job of just staying put, taking it off the helmet and they were able to score a run from that. 2-0 pitch to Landry and goes outside for ball three. Yeah, and Landry already has a walk in this game, so last time she was able to work it to a full count. That one, a strike late in. Make it 3-1 with two outs. And Landry looks at it, ball four. She takes the five-pitch walk and keeps standing alive for now Serena Gonzalez. Gonzalez struck out swinging her last at bat. And now with a runner on, trying to keep this inning going for her team. Comes the first pitch of the AB. Fouled away, out of play. one with Landry at first. Here comes the pitch to Gonzalez. And that one, again, just foul tip behind the plate. A lot of those so far today. Yeah, an off-speed pitch there, too, from Shepard. And Gonzalez did a good job of waiting on it, but just could not get on top of it, keep it fair. So Gonzalez now down on the count, 0-2. That one easy to lay off as it goes outside to ball one. Landry goes, but that one will go foul. I think Landry might get tired of having to steal and come back. So still a one-two count here for Gonzalez coming up on the fifth pitch of her at bat. Just looking for a base hit here, a way to get on. One-two and Gonzalez strikes out swinging. That'll end things here in the third, but the Bulldogs get two runs back as they're now ahead by one going to the top of the fourth. Please stay with us. Texas Lutheran University, we believe a better world is possible, and it all starts with you. For more than a century, we've been preparing students just like you to follow their dreams and embrace their potential. With small class sizes to facilitate relationship building and affordable tuition, we're committed to you. Because at TLU, you're not just a student, you're part of a community. TLU. Learn boldly. Live to inspire. Learn more at tlu.edu.
right, welcome back to Mork Softball Field. A defensive change for the Bulldogs as Maddie Johnson is now in right field in place of Tatum Steve. And leading things off here in the top of the fourth is going to be number three, Catherine Stokes. First pitch she sees a bit low to Moulet. But she's pitched really well so far. My blue. Oh, I think I'm off a batter. I don't know how I'm off by a batter, but this is Bella Rodriguez. Actually, Dominguez, Bella Dominguez. Oh. <laughs> Similar names. Bella Rodriguez is behind the plate right now. It's by habit. By habit to yeah. say Rodriguez. It's Dominguez, Rivero, and Thrasher do up for the ladies if it's 1-2 here. Well, now I'm upset because now I don't know how the inning ended. Do you remember how they ended the inning? Well, fans, just so you know, I normally do my scorecards with Sydney, <laughs> but because of the nachos before the game, I wasn't able to make my lineups in time. So I'm going strictly off Sydney. So she's on her own right now. <laughs> Hate to say it. I mean, it's safe to say that we will never do this again. <laughs> yeah, this is a test run. But poor, we were debating if I should do it, and then Sydney was like, oh, this will be a test run. We'll see how it goes. Which is one of us doing it, but. It's a failure. Yeah. A failure. I've doomed us all. Meanwhile, I think we got a 2 2 count here. Actually, full. 3 2. I have something right today. <laughs> <laughs> here comes the pitch from Moulet. And it's going to be popped up foul. So a full count going on to the seventh pitch of her at bat here is Dominguez. And popped up. And Kylie Jack moving over to make the play for out number one. Well, that's done a really good job today of being efficient in her innings. I mean, she's only thrown 34 pitches so far. She's thrown lots of strikes. Um, she's been able to get these hitters. I mean, so many ground balls, a uh, couple, couple strikeouts. Um, she's been really efficient back up there on the mound. Two count here though to Rivero, the DP. She had a ground ball her last at bat. Not a bad, not a bad hit ball either. Mm -hmm. I think she hit it uh, pretty hard, and Clark just showed a lot of range over there. So now the count 3-0 is let down here in this one, and that is a four pitch walk. So we let. Not quite fine in the zone on that at bat, but that puts a lady aboard with one out. Yeah, and this will bring up number 10, Jaden Thrasher. Number 10, Jaden Thrasher. So Thrasher, again, like we mentioned, behind the plate last time. Now she's at third for game two. Got some wind still blowing in. From center right now, of course, like you mentioned, the wind's kind of all over the place today. As that bun attempt will go foul from Thrasher. Yeah, I kind of trying to sneak one in there on the defense, catch him off guard a bit. But now she's down to an 0 2 count. This one, 4 6. Not three, though. It was hard hit to Clark. Not a good chance to be a double play ball, but the Bulldogs will take it, getting the lead runner. Yeah. Really good job by Clark getting the lead runner, like you said. It just happened to be repeating you. <laughs> Sometimes so. I take what you're going to say. I apologize. You honestly do it more often than not. 
It's really funny. So you know why, though? Why? It's because baseball. I'm usually by myself, so I'm having to, like, yeah. do a little play-by-play, -play, but also kind of give a quick analysis. I sometimes take steal some of your thunder. Ground ball to third, and Hillis makes a throw over across Showing the diamond in time. Showing off some range. Mm -hmm. so Hillis ends the inning. And after the walk, nothing comes of it. We'll go bottom four, Bulldogs ahead, 2-1. Please stay with us. As an MAT student, you are an athletic trainer, and I think that's something really cool that we get to experience. We're pretty hands-on. Anything that like our preceptor asks us to do, like we're able to do. Going out to practices and traveling to games. We're doing evals, looking at them, helping them with their rehab like protocols. For me personally, I do a lot of like hands-on, where I'm like speaking with the patients about how they feel, and so I feel like it's a lot of like one-on-one -on -one interactions. Knowing that I'm going to go into the clinic every day and I don't know who's going to walk through the door and what their problems going to be, and that I get to be the one that tells them like, hey, this is what's wrong, but. I can also help you, so here's a solution. All right, welcome back to Mork Softball Field. We got Reagan Hillis leading things off in her second at bat against Shepard as she lays down a bunt, and the play will be made in time by Dominguez over at first base. Yeah, Dominguez played well. She had the double back in game one off the straw, the one hit, only hit she allowed. And she's made some good plays at first today as well. Yeah, she's been really solid just overall for her team and it's played a huge part in, you know, keeping them, giving them hope. Really, this uh, ladies defense has been really good. I mean, last game there were a good bit of errors and miscommunication, but... For the most part, they are really solid, and mm -hmm. this game especially with a lot of balls put in play. Yeah. 1-0 count here. And Rodriguez looks at a strike there. It's a close call. Sydney doesn't agree with that one. <laughs> well, I definitely don't think it was a close call. <laughs> um, but, you know, catchers frame, yeah. and sometimes umpires blink. <laughs> and that's all it is. It's part of the game. 1-1, one, one, Rodriguez swinging. It's popped up in shallow right. And that's going to be Stokes making the play. We're out number two. As Dawson, actually not Dawson, Shepard making quick work of the bottom of the order so far. And now Liao will come back up. And you know, like, uh, what they're starting to introduce now, Easton and, like, lower uh, minor league teams, mm -hmm. they're introducing a nice hit by Liao there. Yeah. Good effort from Santa for cutting it off, but Leal was going to get there regardless. Yeah. But so right now in some of the um, some minor, like, baseball leagues, mm -hmm. they're introducing where you can challenge a uh, ball strike call. So, you know, if you don't agree, you step out, you give a signal, umpire yeah. will give the signal, and then they turn around to the tracking system that the field has, and that makes the call. Do you think they could ever reach the D3 level? Because obviously it takes a bit of money to have, I'm assuming they have special cameras on the field or at least replay cameras. No, they, they have special at. cameras on the field uh -huh. that track um, like the velocity of the ball, mm -hmm. the pitch, the way it's spin, the exit velo. I mean, it tracks everything. Kind of like a video game almost. Yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty much. Um, I don't know. I don't really like it, but it is definitely a thing. Yeah. Might be a while before that reaches the D3 level, but... For sure. I mean, it might even be a while before it reaches MLB or mm -hmm. D1. So, um, I'm curious to talk to coaches and see what their opinions are yeah. of it. Cause it's been talked about for a while. I, I remember a couple of seasons ago before the MLB season started talking about maybe one day just doing away with really almost replacing umpires, at least mm -hmm. with calling balls and strikes and just having a full automated system. But, you know, Humanier is also part of the game, and it's why you play the game. As, meanwhile, Clark is going to reach base, and, and Liao comes all the way around to score. So it's 3-1 Bulldogs now. I mean, the speed of this team can hurt you. 
And, I mean, they have shown that multiple times today. And it's just, I mean, yeah, it's something you yeah. can't really mess around with. I mean, if you were to list the top two strengths of TLU softball, I mean, it's it's your pitching and your, and your speed. I mean, those two are what make this team so good. And speaking of speed, Clark, stolen base number 57 now, unofficially. 52 coming into today. I think that's number five through two, one and a half games. That's just crazy. I mean, that's a lot I mean, of stolen bases. Has she been thrown out this year? That's the real question. Can we check that? Yes, we can. She's been caught twice. Twice. It's pretty. I'll take. I like those odds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's a uh, 55 for 57. Yeah. Or I guess. 57 and 59. Yes. Thank you, Easton. Thank you for correcting yeah. me, good sir. Quick math. Yeah. And we all know my brain has not been <laughs> massing today, so. One more count here to Annie K. Showing bunt. Meanwhile, Clark's going to go. That one might have hit her. But she's going to keep on going to home. And Clark, did she miss the bag? And she got it. Kaylee Clark showing off the wheels as well. It is 4-1 TLU. And Sydney's in shock once again, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sometimes I just get deep in thought. Uh-huh. You know? No, I can tell. <laughs> There's times after a play of Sydney just looking. I, I know she's thinking. <laughs> yeah, there's so many thoughts. I mean, umpire called the play at the play, called obstruction on the catcher. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot it happened mattered. <laughs> I think Clark was still in there safe, mm -hmm. but, you know, just him making the signal, making it obvious for everyone. Another bunt attempt by Kay, and it goes foul behind her. And I believe he's going to call her out of the box, but because she only had one strike on her, it'll just be another strike. Yeah, so count should be full now. Yes, count should be full. Yeah. Coach Wilson not agreeing with <laughs> the blue behind the plate. Yeah, I just had to do a quick little correction there to the umpire. It happens. <laughs> you make mistakes. And I think Wilson just wanted to let him know that he made the mistake. <laughs> but definitely something to, something to think about, especially now with two strikes. Yeah. As Kay fouls off another. 4-1 our score with Bulldogs. I mean, Centenary, after the top of the third, they got that one run. And they led it for a second. But the Bulldogs, really quick response. I think that, that one run kind of sparked them to put the foot on the gas. And they're now up 4-1 since then. Yeah, absolutely. As that one goes high for ball four, Andy Kay draws the walk with two outs. And always tough as a pitcher when that, that two-out walk happens. I mean, especially when you get into the heart of the lineup. I mean, we have mm -hmm. Jack, Johnson, Landry, Gonzalez coming up. These are all hitters with great averages, great RBIs. <laughs> so now Jack here, 1-0 count. Runner goes, that's K. Not a bad throw from Dawson behind the plate, but Andy K with the stolen base. Yeah, just not in time, really. And I mean, a lot of that has to do with speed and when they're leaving the bag. And I mean, quite frankly, runners are going to leave early until they're called out. Yep. It's kind of just how it is. You're going to cheat until you get caught unfortunate aspect of life. <laughs> <laughs> One two count here to Kylie Jack with K at second. Bulldogs can get some more two out magic going. They've been so good in these spots. As Jack fouled off here. Council will stay where it is. Jack, a good uh, RBI opportunity here. She had a base hit in the first inning. Just a little bunt, so just looking to build something. Is that a ball there to K? 
Keep that bat going. 2-2. Two, two. This one. Jam shot. High. Yeah, high in foul territory. That's going to go right off the Bulldog dugout. I almost broke my neck looking at it. <laughs> Moonshot. I'm surprised a bird didn't catch it. <laughs> that bird might have been toasted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jack, she's actually a NFCA Player of the Year. She's on the Player of the Year watch list. I mean, that's... They don't take that lightly. And Jack with a bomb out to right field off the scoreboard. And right on cue, Sydney. Kylie Jack with a bomb out the right. And it is now 6-1, TLU. Obviously, I need to say good things more often. <laughs> it's a good look. I, I've been waiting for her to hit a ball like that for a while. And so yeah. I think I got a little bit of goosebumps over here. <laughs> Made me excited. Uh, that one was gone immediately. Yep, fourth home run of the year. I'm curious as where that was. She was second her. in the conference before. She might be tied now for first with that one. Yeah. I'll look it up and I'll let you know. Yeah. But yeah, Sydney giving her, her her flowers with the the watch list for player national player of the year, and then she does that. That'll help her case. And it looks like Seath is back in, so Johnson is now out of the game. As Seath comes in. for this at bat. All right, I'm gonna look this up. <laughs> okay, she is now tied for home runs at four. Yep. So that is pretty excited. Um, still fourth with RBIs after the two she mm -hmm. just hit there. She's at 26. I'd say that's pretty good. Yeah. Meanwhile, here, pop up. That's going to go into the stands. I got nervous it was going to hit on top. Yeah. <laughs> so one, two count here. With the bases empty after that, Kylie Jack Homer. It's always fun when it goes off the scoreboard, too. I don't know if that's just me. I mean, it is. And, I mean, I know that they have netting to protect the scoreboard, but it's just so much fun when you, like, hear the mm -hmm. the ball hit the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, sometimes it breaks or a <laughs> light bulb goes out. Like, I think that's so fun. It's expensive, but I think it's so fun. It's worth it. Absolutely. I mean, do you think so? I you can never hit a home run off the scoreboard, but I bet it feels great. Well, me neither, but. <laughs> I mean, maybe if I aimed for it. Kai, have you hit a home run off the scoreboard? All right, so all three of us in the booth, unfortunately, haven't felt that feeling. But meanwhile, though, uh, I'm just going to end the inning as Seath strikes out. We'll go top five. Bulldogs ahead 6-1 as Sydney Ulett with a bigger run cushion to work with. We'll be right back. Texas Lutheran University, we believe a better world is possible, and it all starts with you. For more than a century, we've been preparing students just like you to follow their dreams and embrace their potential. With small class sizes to facilitate relationship building and affordable tuition, we're committed to you. Because at TLU, you're not just a student, you're part of a community. TLU. Learn boldly. Live to inspire. Learn more at tlu.edu.
Welcome back to Mork Softball Field as number one Mallory Stout comes in for her second at bat versus Olette. Ground ball hard on the third baseline. Hillis cuts it off. What a play by Reagan Hillis. She made that look easy. She did, and I mean, she snagged it. What an awesome play there by her. And a great ball there by Stout as well. I mean, if that ball gets by, that's an easy double. Now batting number 24, Morgan Dawson. <laughs> this will bring up number 24, Morgan Dawson. And I know they mentioned on the PA, but the first baseman now is Tavery Ortiz. She came in for Jack. Probably just a defensive substitution, similar to Johnson. And I actually think, I think there was some think? switcheroo out there. I think there was. So I think Johnson ended up going in for Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. And then Seath moved to the DP. That's and popped up and Hillis will make the first two put outs in the fifth. Yeah, that's going to be my guess. <laughs> now we have number 23. Well, Sandman back up. Freshman had that nice play in left field earlier on the, on the move. Now she's back up to bat. Yeah, she's been really great defensively for this team. There's been a lot of plays, a lot of times where she's needed as backup, and she's always been there. That one foul tipped into the glove of Bella Rodriguez. It's 1-1. One, one. We'll let that one bouncing up. Yeah, change up just missed by Olette. It's a good pitch to throw. I mean, I'm sure she probably wants some more control over it, but really, I mean, she's thrown it a lot this game, and she's done really well with it. So a 2-2 count here to Sandman. It's a cool last name. I know. They got Sandman. They also have River Bolton House. I'm always jealous of the names we get from the opposing teams. Yeah. I'll be honest. Tell Especially at baseball. We get Tell me about it. My last name is Cox. <laughs> <laughs> Only me and my cousin share that uh -huh. pain. <laughs> and they're both here today. <laughs> Foul tip behind the plate. It's still 2-2. Yeah, Sandman's do a really good job of just battling up there. Two, two, another one fouled away. Pulled to opposite field. Goes towards that Bulldog bullpen and stay here. Yep, and this, we're coming up on the eighth pitch of the yeah, at-bat here as there are two balls, two strikes, and two outs on the board. That one laced back up the middle, cut off by Clark. What a play by Kaylee Clark. And that is going to end things in the top of the fifth. We'll go bottom five. Spectacular yeah. play. We'll get base hit, and she just took it away. Yeah. So bottom five we go, 6-1 our score. Please stay with us. As an MAT student, you are an athletic trainer, and I think that's something really cool that we get to experience. We're pretty hands-on. Anything that like our preceptor asks us to do, like we're able to do. Going out to practices and traveling to games. We're doing evals, looking at them, helping them with their rehab like protocols. For me personally, I knew a lot of like hands-on where I'm like speaking with the patients about how they feel, and so I feel like it's a lot of like one-on-one -on -one interactions. Knowing that I'm going to go into the clinic every day and I don't know who's going to walk through the door and what their problems are going to be, and that I get to be the one that tells them like, hey, this is Welcome back to Mork Softball Field as number one, Mia Landry, leads things off here for the Bulldogs. And Shepard still on the mound here for the ladies. Thanks, 
picks to Landry and that one will be up high again. So ball two to the Bulldog freshman. And she already has two walks so far in this game. Do we think that there will be a third? I like the odds. I like the odds too. And Alex just misses the call again. So 3-0 now to Mia Landry. Yeah, I don't know what it is about Landry to Shepard, but Shepard just can't seem to find the strike zone with her. She saw the game winning hit last time out, and she just hasn't settled in. But there she does find the zone. It's a good pitch for strike one. Three one count here to Landry with no outs. Swing and a miss there. There's a nice pitch from Shepard. She's gotten a few, like, of the strikes she's thrown. I feel like there's been, a, she's had a lot of swing and misses at times. I can agree with that. Yeah. I'll agree. I'll let you have yeah. it. I mean, she has. I don't know. Obviously, we don't track that, but I just, about yeah. once or almost every at bat, she's going to have a couple of pitches where. Maybe I'll gets, start doing that. That could be my job, maybe. I feel like you have enough jobs. <laughs> I already made you make your full list of your all <laughs> Sydney team before all Sydney SCAC team. Yeah, before we get to the conference tournament, which I believe is in about two weeks, three weeks. And then I can even make my own tournament team. Yeah, like by the end of it. Yeah, we could do that. Oh, I would love to. I'm super pumped about it. But yeah, Landry walks for the third time today as. Number three, Harley Russell will come in to run. And running for the Bulldogs, number three, Harley Russell. And I was correct, so Johnson did go in. Fer Gonzalez is the DP the spot, the and then Johnson. the DP was moved to Tatum's seat. Like you said, Johnson now at the plate. Saw her come in late and get a nice infield single last game. The Bulldogs looking to think in run rule again here. If they can get it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and really with the base runners on right now, lots of speed. I mean, not a lot of, not a whole lot of power in this part of the lineup, but I mean, lots of speed. So. Speaking of speed, there goes Russell, and she gets the stolen base with these. That's Harley Russell's fourth stolen base on the year. And I feel like she honestly had some more today. I so I, I might it even feels like it's more than that. I'm surprised she only came in with three because she's, like she's always coming in pinch running. Right? That does surprise me too. Meanwhile, Johnson lays down a perfect bunt. And she'll reach with Russell moving to third. Still nobody out. Yeah, great bunt. I mean, especially of, off a left-handed pitcher who you know has to pick up the ball spin make the throw I mean un unfortunately there's just not enough time for that play to be made yeah. the potential game winning run at the plate right now with Reagan Hillis Bulldogs ahead by five Need to get to eight for the run roll to happen again. Be the second straight if they can do it. Bunt pulled back there from Hillis, who's, like you mentioned, done so well in these spots this year with the bunts. Yeah, she's been super fun to watch. I mean, just using small ball, but then also, I mean, she can line one over your head, hit it in the gap. Another pretty good one laid down there. They don't go home. Surprisingly, I don't know if what well, you would have done there, Sydney, but I feel like the play could have made it home instead. The sacrifice. They also want to get the outs, but Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing is just getting the outs if you're centenary and trying to get out of this game before run rule is in play. Um, but we will see, you know, if uh, this batter gets on base and in scoring position, we'll see them start to care more about yeah. her than getting out so and who is this better 
Sir Easton Allen. It is Jaina Reed. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Transfer yeah. from East Central, I believe. If I remember correctly, last time. Only remember that because shout out my brother. Plays football out there. So. Shout out Easton's mm -hmm. brother. We have Reed coming in today, hitting 278. She's had 18 at bats and five hits. She's done a pretty good job. She's four stolen bases, I believe. So, a good player to pick up from off the bench here. Oh, a bit high from Shepard, who's gone the whole, whole time here in game two. She has. I mean, she's gone the distance. She's stayed in there, you know. I mean, she had a really good first two innings. Oh, really good pitch there, and it gets the call. One, two to Reed. Yeah, a good off speed on the lower outside part of the play. I mean, that's a that's a tough pitch to hit for sure. I and mean, I might even go back to it if I'm Shepard. One goes high a bit for ball two. So two two count, one out, and Johnson over at second base for Reed. Ooh, that one foul tipped off the catcher Dawson. Stays two two. Just had to check if anyone was home, that's all. <laughs> doing a good job so far this season coming in and pinch hit opportunities and a good job fouling off that change up and just staying alive to get another pitch in this at bat this one popped up that's going to go foul as Reed making most of this at bat off the bench. Yeah, I mean, this will be the eighth pitch of her at bat here, and she's done a good job. She's seen a lot of pitches, so, you know, she's prepared. She's probably starting to feel pretty comfortable in there. That one popped up from Reed, and nothing going on on the base pass, but that is out number two. This is going to bring in another pinch hitter. This is going to be number 19, Courtney Bellinger, in for Liao. Saw Bellinger get the start in game one. And I think she was later replaced from by Maddie Johnson, but gets another opportunity here. Bellinger last game, uh, she grounded out to short twice, and then Johnson came in for her in the last at bat. So I mean a good two out RBI opportunity for her. That one runs a bit inside, almost got the knees of Bellinger. Annie K is still over there at Actually, I think it's Hillis. Okay. Am I wrong again? Yeah. You were 0 for 2. It's Johnson. This is the problem when I don't have my scorecard. <laughs> I just... Yeah. It's okay. Thank you for catching me because I was about to go for 3 probably. <laughs> it's been a long day, ladies and gentlemen. I say that. Gosh, Easton. But I is, need you to memorize is, everything know, that happens. I know. It is Friday, Friday though, so can't complain. Meanwhile, strike late in there to Bellinger. It's 2-1. As Maddie Johnson will make it back to second. Yeah, big lead. Big lead. I mean, in situations like this, I'd probably run a defensive play where I throw it to the shortstop and get her caught up in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. Bellinger does not get enough of that one. It's a fly out the center. 
And we'll go top six, seven, one our score. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Mork Softball Field. 7-1 our score. So back practice Sydney Ouellette and she'll make the play for out number one. As the ladies still a long ways to go to get back in this one, but anything can happen. Absolutely. We got Catherine Stokes stepping in for her third at bat. There's a good pitch from Sydney there, kind of froze her for strike number one. I mean, I will tell you this right now. I have been frozen off of that changeup as well. From Sydney or just in yes, general? Yes, from yeah. Sydney. I've swung and missed. Speaking miss. from experience. I mean, I mean, it's deadly. It's a great pitch, and she throws it so well. She's confident when she throws it, which is huge. So two one here. One out already in the top of the six. And this one, Clark again cuts it off. I'm, I mean, she's been killing it at second today. I mean, she's like the defensive MVP right here. I mean, she is just the way that she has made those plays is crazy. Cause they get hit, and I'm like, oh. she's taking away hits. Right? Yeah, I'm like, oh, that's a base hit, and then somehow. She gets over there. I mean, it's crazy. It's awesome. Sorry. Just going to bring up Bella Dominguez, mm -hmm. not Rodriguez. Nope. We learned our lesson. <laughs> yes, we did. We learned from our mistakes. We, we here. grow here. We grow. 1-0 <laughs> uh, yeah. count to her. So she's had a good day for the ladies at first and I think had the only hit in game one with that double off of Ashton Strother, Caitlin, or Kaylee Clark underneath it. Trout number three. So we'll go bottom six or TLU will look to end things before the top of the seventh perhaps with the run rule. Please stay with us.
All right, welcome back to Mork Softball Field. Kaylee Clark leaning things off with a bunt single. Her first at bat. Now batting well, her four fourth at bat now, but she's on board, and that'll bring up number 24, Annie Kay, who is one for one with a walk and a sacrifice. Snows. Man, is anyone surprised at Clark taking off? But that's another stolen base. I believe that's 58 for the day. Yeah. That ball is going to be thrown into the outfield as Clark steals third. And then easy run scored off of two pitches now bulldogs are just one run away from this run rule victory kaylee clark just doing it all by herself right there pretty much <laughs> she said no worries guys i'll score one i mean it's crazy you get on base with a butt and then you come around to score without anything anyone else having to do anything it's beautiful right there mm -hmm. Andy k reaches with ease infield single and that puts the potential winning run at first. Now, can she do the same thing that Clark did? Now batting number 12, Avery. That would be pretty crazy. <laughs> Some deja vu to end the night. That would be crazy, but this is Tavery Ortiz up to bat. Here goes Annie Kay. Will she go to third? No. I don't have to wait. <laughs> it's now, now you have me thinking. <laughs> I know, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> like now we're just patiently waiting. I'm sure the ladies gotta know. Hey, she's probably gonna steal. Not quite. <laughs> Fans, if you guys could donate a coffee machine for us. Or Starbucks gift cards. Comfier no, chairs, though. Is curb, I think, one. yeah, comfier chairs is my number one. But yeah. hey, we can't complain too much. We get to we make a little bit of money fun. calling softball and having fun. Yeah, we get to have fun up here. We get to watch softball, which, you know, I'm not as. It's not your most favorite thing in the world to do, but I enjoy it. It's growing on me. Aww. As the years have gone on. This is year three for me, so. You heard it here, fam. Come a long way. You heard it here. Eastern Allen enjoys it. I think it's safe to say. I mean, this hopefully doesn't hurt anyone's feelings. I enjoyed watching softball more than baseball. Well, I think most of the world would agree yeah, with you there. So. Sorry, baseball fans. Yeah. Baseball can be fun, though. I mean, it can be right now. I mean, shout out the TLU baseball team. They're up 2-0, I believe, on, on Trinity right now in San Antonio. It's a big series for the for the boys up there. And I believe Trinity's ranked, right? Yeah, ranked or number one in the league. And the Bulldogs, I mean, we're on a hot we're on a hot streak right now and hoping to keep that going up in San Antonio. So exciting for them, too, as both baseball and softball continue to play well. Meanwhile, Ortiz is out there, and now back comes Tatum Seath. Now, so one out here with K over at second base. And see if looking to get a base hit. She has two strikeouts and a flyout so far in this game. So see just, you know, I feel like I jinxed her earlier when I said that she's been seeing the ball real well, but. Okay, able to steal third as Seath has a swing and a miss there, so. Counts now 0-2 to Seath as K is now standing on third. So an easy sack fly can do it. Anything in the green will. And Seath will foul that one behind. So still an 0-2 count here. That one 
misses outside and low for ball one. So after Seath, we're going to have number three, Harley Russell, come in. I believe Russell has not had a net bat yet off of Shepard. I mean, I'd say if I'm Centenary, I'm with some pretty good odds right now with Seath, who's 0 for 3 so far this game, and then facing a new hitter the next game, or the next at bat. So that one fell off pretty hard. Seath got a, a lot of it, but pulled it too much. Yeah, it's going to take him a while to go chase that foul ball. <laughs> It is way over I think there. one of the centenary parents is going to take on that job. Oh. Shout out to him. That's a kind man right there. 2-2. <laughs> two, two. Deep fly do ball. It. And Annie K comes across the score. And now we got a walk-off sack fly to end this one early as the Bulldogs sweep the doubleheader here on Friday night. 9-1 after... With getting an 8-0 shutout from Ashton Shaw that they get a, a gem from Sydney Ouellette and the bats keep it hot yeah. as well 9-1 is our final I feel like I didn't say it enough but Ouellette did a really really yeah. great job this game I mean she just was lights out efficient she was confident she was really fun to watch out there so hats off to her getting a win and I don't know speed kills it definitely does so we'll be back here tomorrow for game three, the finale. Do we know what time the game is? I'm looking at it right now. I believe it is at 12. 12. So we'll see you all here tomorrow at 12. Any final thoughts on this one, Sydney? Nope. I don't think I have any. Not too many words to say. Bulldogs take care of business tonight. A couple of run rules. And we'll go. We'll see you all tomorrow for game three at 12. See if the Bulldogs can complete the sweep. We thank you all for listening. Sydney Cox and Easton Allen signing off.